Hey everybody, welcome to The Secret History of Living in Your Aquarium. What I wanted to talk to you about today is this strange little fish right here. This is a lipstick goby. It's still a little bit young, and it's still a little bit getting used to its environment. It's only been uh, 48 hours or so. You can see it's in a tank that's full of algae. Well, that's no coincidence. They eat algae and biofilm. That is their hobby, their habit, and their, uh, I, I suppose it's their occupation. But what I was doing was all of a sudden I was knocking uh, the, the debris off of these uh, various plants uh, because it's, it's algae and it's, it's become loose. And all of a sudden the gobies, these lipstick gobies who are from Indonesia, started coming to the utensil and actually interacting with it, which is bizarre to say the least in my experience uh, with fish. Uh, they don't like when you have... Hold on, let me get the focus back. They don't like when you have pointy utensils near them. They hate that. Um, but these little gobies actually are engaging, I don't know why, with this scraper. I don't know if they're eating what I'm knocking off here. Sorry about that glare. I know it's awful. Um, but these guys have quickly become one of my favorite fish in the fish room. Uh, they're very interesting. At first I thought, oh, they're going to be really shy. They're not shy. They just uh, they hide some of the day. And when they do come out, they're very bold. Uh, very bold. In fact, uh, they come and they sit right on the front of the glass. I know that my fo the, the camera's having a really hard time focusing today. Uh, so sorry about that, with the light the way it is. But I wanted to catch them while they were out and doing their little shenanigans. So these guys have uh, a special adaptation right here. You see these front fins? They have a circular array of fins right there that allows them to hold on like a suction cup to any surface. Uh, the smoother the surface, uh, the better with the little suction cup. And then if that doesn't work, they can also use their little jaw to hold on. And then there's a textured pattern, almost like gecko's feet, all along their belly uh, that they can hold on with as well. So they're very adapted to holding on. And what they do is they hold on in quick moving rivers and streams uh, and these ones are from Indonesia they live on several islands in Indonesia they're colloquially known as lipstick gobies but they uh, they definitely there are other gobies that are also known as lipstick gobies uh, these are a true freshwater lipstick goby and uh, right now, you know, they don't seem that interested in eating all the biofilm that is available to them. But uh, they, are, they are playing with the tool that is in the tank, which is odd. I've just never had fish other than maybe panda garas, which are also in this tank, and eat uh, algae and uh, alfuks and things like that, which is kind of odd. Um, they also will play with me. They'll come, they'll eat the dead skin off your hands, things like that. So you want to make sure your hands are really clean when, when they're in the tank. I mean, you always want to do that, but you really want to make sure when you're playing with, with these guys or some, some other fish like that, that's going to actually interact. But they're called lipstick gobies because they have a little ring of orange or red. Uh, sometimes it's peach colored around their lips. And you can see it kind of looks like, I don't know, a Kermit the Frog cartoon or something. A little puppet. But I think they're pretty cute. And these guys are not small. These guys are um, almost fully grown. And they are uh, definitely of, of a good size. Whoops, sorry guys. I am just can't... The, the photography, cinematography is poor today. Uh, but in any case... They're not super small. They're of a good size. I'd say they're almost the size of my pinky. In fact, this one's the smallest one. And he is about the size of my pinky. Um, and then they've got some mottled texture up here. Um, so when they're looked down upon, they kind of have this interesting 
uh, snake skin kind of pattern going to them. Uh, and they're able to articulate their eyes around uh, pretty far compared to a lot of fish. And then the other thing about them is, so they have those pectoral fins on either side of their, um, either side of them to kind of, uh, direct flow of water away from their gills or to, uh, away from their body so that there's less water pushing on their body. It kind of causes resistance. It's like a spoiler on a car. And then that weird fin that we see right here is actually two of their stabilizing fins or a split from their pectoral fin and it's fanned out in a per of course he's right on the, the the glass where we can't look at it anymore but it's fanned out into a perfect little circle so i think that's really bizarre uh, other gobies have this too but these guys have the most complete fully circular one uh and there we have a pandagara so these guys are also from Southeast Asia, and they also eat uh, alfux or algae. So, um, yeah, and they also will interact and come to my hand. They, on the other hand, don't like these tools as much. Um, I mean, I've never seen them enjoy the tool, per se. I've never seen them come to it. Uh, to me, this is very odd that, that I've been able to get them... They'll hide all day, and they'll come out when I start cleaning the tank or changing the filter or doing something, you know, of the sorts. So, the other information that you want to know while you're looking at this ugly tank full of reflections, now that you've beheld the magical beast, the, the, the goby, um, is what kind of uh, life do they need to live? What, what should you put in their tank to make them all... Uh, happy and, and sparky and spanky happy. Well, um, I would recommend that you have very clean water. You want to change their water. Here comes another one. This one's a skinny one. A skinny mini female. Um, and uh, there, there's, I have, I believe, two males and a female. The males have a little more color. Females have less color. And actually, we got a couple. They're, they're all coming out at once right now. So, if you look here, let's try to get that focused again. We can look at that fin one more time real close. So, look at that. It's just bizarre. It's a round fin that can hold on like exactly like a suction cup. And they can do that, and it, you can use it on rocks. All those little ridges they have, you can use them on rocks and all sorts of things. Now, you can see their gills. Look at the, the gill folds there. They're really intense, and uh, that, that means, that, like, I, many fish have this when you look at it closely, but these guys, they really need a lot of oxygen, um, and they breathe it in, and they go through it quickly. So these guys use a lot, up a lot of oxygen, and they live in environments that are creeks flowing down from mountains. And so when they live up in, say, the rainforest, it may still be hot and and humid and rainforesty, but it may only be 80 degrees. Whereas down at sea level, uh, in Indonesia and in in the islands around the area, it may be 110 degrees with 80 percent humidity. Whereas it may be raining and 100 or 80 or even 75 degrees up in the mountains and the the creeks where they live now. They are a true freshwater goby also, so they technically, um, and I should say true adult goby, that people can take that two ways, because there are some, there are a few gobies that live their whole life in freshwater, but these guys live their adult life in freshwater, and they can totally survive in freshwater, um, but as, as babies, as larval fish, what they do is the adults will lay the eggs in the water, uh, in the stream, during the rainy season. It'll rain really heavily, and then the uh, eggs get washed down into the, uh, the uh, a river, down the creek, and then into the opening of, you know, brackish water, marshes, like um, banyan forests, or um, areas where there's 
sunken forests, trees, and salty water. And then sometimes the larvae will even go all the way out to open sea and swim for, you know, months. And while they get bigger, they just swim and they fatten up and uh, then they come back as they're starting to get their color and the shape. They look a little bit less like a, a literally like a little sperm and more like this guy more like a little fish or a little snake and then they come back to either the stream they were born in or some species uh not this one though some species actually come, come back to a totally different river altogether um but these ones like i said these are little lipstick gobies they're fairly easy to take care of as far as gobies go they get bigger than my other gobies that you've seen the stiphodon family of gobies uh, in my other tanks, but I got these guys from Aquatic Arts, and if you need their information and would like to pick up some of these gobies, you can definitely do so. It's in the link below, and there's a discount attached using the code SECRETHISTORY15, all one word, no spaces, all caps, and you can pick up your own funky little gobies. Uh, these guys actually get even brighter colors than they are now. Uh, I haven't quite figured out yet because you need a very mature tank to have them and you also need a tank that is over filtered. You want a tank, uh, I have two of these 75 gallon uh, hang off the back filters running uh, in a tank and it's planted. They don't need a planted tank necessarily but what they do need is this gross mess of biofilm. Now, they could just eat clear biofilm or slightly algae-riddled biofilm, but really, I mean, if you've got a grimy algae tank and you've got some flow to it and you're running an airline in it or an air stone, you can see this, you can see the air coming off the plants, the CO2 coming off the plants. Well, okay, that's time, that, that's a whole subject for a different video. If, if you see air coming off the plants, uh, it's making oxygen. It's growing at such a rate that it's producing oxygen, but that means it's sucking up CO2. At night, plants release their CO2. In the day, they release their oxygen. Okay, tangent over. But these little guys are very playful. They will come play with you while you clean the tank um, and while you work in the tank, but you got to give them kind of a dirty tank, and so you only want to have a couple per, uh, per tank, uh, that's, I, I, there's no hard, fast rule, but I'd say if you have a 20 gallon tank, um, you probably want no more than maybe four, five, three to five of them max, I would say, uh, just because they need to be able to graze on that, on these biofilms. And if they run out, it's, it can be hard to find another thing for them to eat. They really want to eat algae and bacteria and plankton and things that are growing on these surfaces. They, they won't settle for anything else. Now their heads also articulate like their eyes, and you can see this, they can pop up just their head, so if the, 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 uh, if the current is really fast, they can just poke their head up over that. They can also bury themselves in sand or substrate and do the same thing, which is kind of fun. They almost look like little meerkats, but then they're off, and they're swimming away and doing their thing. See, now it's clearing off wood. Um, so you want to give them some hiding spaces. You want to give them lots of flowing water. You want a loud tank that's annoyingly uh, flowing. And then, um, you know, just to contrast, this is what the other true gobies would look like, are the stiphodons. So stiphodon gobies, uh, there is a blue female, and here is a, uh, a golden uh, siphodon male that's not showing with his fins. But they'd be, uh, his, his pectoral fins are clear and all the other fins have color to them uh, as far as uh, his two dorsal fins. So that's kind of cool. They've got two dorsal fins, these other guys. And then over here on the rocks, we've got some blue, neon blue dwarf gobies, a female and a male. And then we also have in here uh, some riffle gobies from Palau. So the gobies that you see, or that you saw over in that first tank, are the ones that are closest to Australia, to Taiwan and 
uh, just that main group of continental islands, basically, Borneo, Java, um, Macau, uh, and, and as well as Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand. And then they follow the coast, that coastline, out straight out from there, from Southeast Asia, out into the Pacific Islands. And so they can be found all over the Pacific Islands, all the way out to uh, Hawaii, in fact. And they've swim, swam from freshwater, and then they come in, and on many of the islands, they become true freshwater living fish. So they're a really fun one. You need to be prepared to house them in a place with enough biofilm uh, to feed them. So that requires that you probably have some other fish, you have a decent light, you have good water flow, and then you're going to want to give them extra oxygen as well. There's there's a little neon blue goby with his golden fins showing. Um, and then the, the last thing is the temperature. So you're going to want the temperature to be somewhere between 72 and 82. I know that's pretty broad, but you want the TDS and... Uh, and the KHGH to be very low because you want it to be similar to rainwater. And you can add some leaves, some catapa leaves, and things like that. Basically, anything that encourages bacterial growth, uh, positive bacterial growth, obviously, is a good thing. So I hope you enjoyed this little showcase. And uh, like I said, if you want to pick up your own, you can pick them up at Aquatic Arts dot com uh they have the best price i've seen on them they have the most species i've ever seen in any one store and uh they're very healthy very good looking they got here overnight shipping uh and i got a good selection of males and females even though you'd need brackish water to hatch the uh babies if they do uh, reproduce and people are working on the, their reproductive cycles in captivity as we speak they just haven't quite got it down yet so again sorry about the cinematography very poor in this video just because of the time of day but I wanted to show you this kind of bizarre behavior that they are uh, partaking in because they're literally like playing with uh, this not so friendly tool uh, and they definitely will play with your fingers, like when I put my hand in there and they were doing that just at the beginning of the video. So, all right, guys, I will talk to you later. Uh, please like and subscribe if that uh, tickles your fancy, if I've uh, earned that from you. Uh, and also, if you want to know how to get rid of algae, uh, check out some of my other videos on getting rid of algae or blackbeard algae specifically, and I can show you that. However, right now, I'm kind of letting it languish, and it has already died off quite a bit, but um, these little gobies are just so much fun that I'm kind of saying forget the plants and the rest of my critters, uh, as long as they'll, they're healthy. Uh, forget their taste in things. Let's just let these crazy new little gobies uh, go to town and enjoy their algae-filled little stream, their little hill stream. So power head over here get get turned on later tonight and uh, when you do water changes, if you turn on the power head, you can really see them go crazy. They have a lot of fun because uh, they think it's, it's like a the, the, the rains have come and so they think that the creek is overfilling and uh, you know they swim up against it and they can swim against pretty much as much water current as you could throw at them. They're almost, uh, they're almost, like, they hold on better than a gecko per, per pound. Uh, and like I said, they can climb out of the tank, so you'll want a lid on the tank. But they can actually pull themselves up waterfalls, come out of water and hold their breath for a while. And, uh, these lipstick gobies, they may look funny, but, uh, they're serious, serious survivors that have evolved, uh, from some saltwater fish into these, uh, colonizers of the Pacific and all of their relatives in the chain of life. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Have a good one. Bye.